All right, guys, got us a nice little heat source here. Um, picked this furnace up locally. It's just an oil-fired uh, forest air furnace out of an old trailer. So we're gonna get this set up today. So we got some heat in the boat this winter when we're doing our fiberglass work. Yep, be nice and cozy. Yeah. All right, so just a little bit to go through here. We'll get to it. Uh, 150 bucks. Looks like it's in pretty good shape. Somebody's used it for a glass project in the past, so got a little dust in it. We'll have to blow it out. Yeah, just ran our air hose out here and uh, we'll put the, the suction line back in here so we don't get a bunch of crud in there and then give us a good blast. Um, try and get up there in the motor. Looks like it don't look too bad, but try and get as much of this fiberglass dust out of here as we can. It's pretty tough on um, brushes and bearings, so I'm trying to get it cleaned up. Um, probably do a little work on this OSHA approved wiring that we got here. Um, <laughs> yeah, we grabbed a, just a roll of Romex from home, uh, cable clamp, we'll stick it on here and, and wire this in. I'll have to go pick up a thermostat. In the meantime, we'll probably just jumper these two to get fired up. I don't even know if it works. Hopefully it does. Um, it sounded like it was a working pole, so. Yeah. The forest air comes out of the bottom of this unit right here. So we're just gonna make a simple plywood flange on there with a couple of holes on it. One that we can open to blow hot air into this space and we'll be able just to direct that heat where we need it. It should be nice and simple that way. And uh, we'll get a thermostat for that that we can just kind of move around whichever area we happen to be in. And that should solve our, our heat problems this winter. Yeah, hopefully solve some of these condensation issues yeah. a little bit. Kind of drippy in here this morning. Yep, that's going to be the battle. Um, it's not too big of a deal in the fish hold because we'll <laughs> Be able to contain that pretty easily back here where we're laminating we're gonna have to uh, do something about it we've got some insulation underneath our house that was there when we bought the place um, so we're just gonna go ahead and put that on the walls right there put some tarps up over the top of it to kind of create a, a barrier and then um, probably the same across the roof it should insulate that area pretty good and make it easy to heat so yeah, we actually got a, a loaner one from our buddy and uh, just spent an hour or so yesterday getting it going, but I was really just wanted to get one of these too. So put a post up on Facebook and, and uh, a couple popped up. So for 150 bucks, you can't go wrong. It's a nice, easy way to, to heat a place. Yeah and it's pretty portable. It doesn't weigh that much. Mm -hmm. Two guys can easily <clears throat> lift it, so we'll just be able to heft it up there. And... Okay, guys, got it all blasted out, kind of. Yeah, I want to test this real quick before we uh, fiddle with it too much, then we'll get some power run to it. We'll run that uh, Romex down to our breaker panel and put it on a breaker. These are pretty simple, so you just have a blower fan this goes through a heat exchanger, passes the cold air through the heat exchanger. If you look down in here, you can see the tubes. So this is the firebox in here, and these tubes are just connecting to the fan up there. So it forces the air through that, through these tubes, out through the bottom here. And this would go into like your ducting system and a forced air system. Um, the heater part of it is just a basic oil burner right here you've got a transformer right here that uh creates high voltage current going to a couple of electrodes that create a spark um you've got your oil pump here that pressurizes and atomizes the oil and then it blows it through a little orifice and and sprays it inside the firebox got a little fan here to help pump some heat in there um just a basic control box pretty simple um I just unplugged the the fan and the or the uh, the ignition circuit right now, and uh, we'll just go ahead and we'll turn this fan on and and blow some of this crud out of here. 
Um, probably gonna get a little dusty right there, I'm guessing. So this just has a, um, just a simple push pull right here so you can manual operate this, so. Whoop, yeah, go green it. Okay, well. So as mentioned, the previous owner uh, used it inside their shed. Um, so it is a little dusty. Yeah, hopefully a stretch job on a boat. So. Yeah, hopefully be able to get some of the uh, dust out of it here. It sounds okay. Yeah, it's uh, not screeching any, or anything, so that's good. Yeah, no horrible uh, sound there, so. So next we'll just, uh, we'll go ahead and um, get this fuel line plumbed in and uh, we'll just stick a hose in a cup for a moment and, and just get fired up and make sure she runs all right. Yep. And just a couple of little tabs on these transformers to hold them in. Looks like one's missing. That's nice. Ugh. It's been inhaling a little dust. So this is a transformer right here. This just creates a high current and uh, feeds it into these two electrodes. These are... Uh, looks like they'll need it cleaned up a tad bit. But they just go through this, these uh, electrodes right here and they come to a inside the burner box here they're just close together and they create a spark across there and then the atomized fuel is blown across that ignites into the firebox heats it up in there and the air passing through the firebox uh, transfers the heat into the air so pretty simple setup really basically just like an oil fired boiler at home but instead of uh, tubes in here with your your water that would circulate through your baseboard heaters this is just a, a air heat exchanger. Um, this is just a little photovoltaic cell right here that detects the flame. If it doesn't detect it, it'll shut the unit down so you don't flood it full of, full of fuel. Let's so. plug this back in up here. And uh, yeah, hopefully this guy will work all right. Let's close this up. See if we can get this to prime, I guess. So yeah, should be uh, should be good now. Yeah, that was nasty looking fluid in there. Okay, I'll put some fresh stuff in here. Okay. She got fire. <laughs> These are probably gonna need to be cleaned up. Looks like somebody was yeah, looks like different. in here before fiddling about. <laughs> Might have to go pick up a couple of new electrodes. That one's kind of this so you're not on. matching clearly. So. Now, fishermen, this will be good to have. It will make heating things easy. And say we'll just have some flexible ducting we can drag around where we need to drop our heat right down and into the fish hole where we're working. And, yep. And, uh, Make it easy. We to need it. Okay. Well, I guess that's it. All right, guys. So we got our furnace uh, connected to the wall so it doesn't flop over. Got the, uh, the exhaust stack on there. 
Use some uh, some high heat gasket material between that flange and the top one, and then foil taped around it, and uh, vacuumed out the inside here, and also blasted out the blower right there, squirrel cage. Um, Dad is just over here working on the pump here. He got a replacement part for um, for our old one. Uh, the little bellows in here for uh, the uh, diaphragm. Yeah, the, the diaphragm was tore. Had a tear in it. Um, yeah, a tear in it. So uh, a kit was ten bucks. I just thought, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Get a kit for it. Um, so it came with a new diaphragm. That looks like a seal in there too for the shaft. And also a new um, strainer, little mesh filter, and gasket. So we will put that on there and see if it fixes it for 10 bucks. I thought it was probably worth a chance. Yeah, why not? You got the new pump as well, just, yeah. just in case. Yeah. And that one was. Uh, hundred bucks. I think it was about ninety. Ninety. Yeah. yeah so in case um, it doesn't, then we're covered. Yeah. In either way, we'll have a spare. This is kind of the type of project that we don't want to be interrupted on. When we start in on this, we got to have heat in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's probably around thirty-two-ish today. Thirty-five, maybe. Yeah, a little warmer today. Yeah. Uh, but it's been like right in the twenties. Yeah, it's been low twenties. So it's been chilly. Too cold to fiberglass without some heat. Yeah. And we need to put the squirrel cage uh, fan back in. It'll blow the hot air. Um, this exhaust out of the bottom is a down slow furnace. So the, the heat comes out of the bottom. So we're just gonna take a board here and we'll just cut a couple of holes, maybe like two or three holes in here, four inch holes. And then we're just gonna get some dryer ducting and we can run one back there where we're gonna laminate into that area for heat. We can take a duct, we can throw it into the fish hold for when we're working down there and have that heat. Mm -hmm. A couple of them will just be able to direct the heat where we need it. Yeah. Um, we can heat up the side of the hole where we go to tab in our bulkhead and, and things like that. So uh -huh. it should make heat management pretty easy. Yeah, I think so. These actually kick out a lot of heat. We had a little double wide trailer before we bought our house that we live in now and um, had a furnace just like this. It, it did fine. It was um, just, just shy of a thousand square foot and it heated that place no problem. Yeah, yeah, and, it worked um, great. This is substantially less space. So it'll keep it pretty warm in here. So yeah, we'll get this burner assembly put back in there. It looks pretty good. Um, the, the motor was fine. It, it was just uh, the pump that was uh, must have been a little bit seized up here. Might need to pick up a new set of electrodes. We'll just clean these ones up for now and see if they work all right. I think the nozzle's okay. Um, yeah, get this thing hooked up and we'll see. Closer here, uh, all wired up with our switch. We'll on off switch out here. Let's see, Matt got the hose run down to the fuel tank. It's bled out, it's picking it up fine. We just kind of got a game plan here. We're just using a couple of, uh, of our mixing cups, some old ones. So we'll just slip these on there and clamp them. Should yeah. work pretty good. Should work great. Matt and his endless ideas. <laughs> Not in the stats, but it's uh, pretty foolproof, I, I hope. I think it, so. It shouldn't blast the lids off as long as you have a, a port open. So. No, I don't think that it's that strong. Those lids are 
pretty good for those. I don't think it'll take much to heat it down there. Uh, it shouldn't. Yeah, we'll just keep a piece of plywood over the top of this and drop our dryer vent down there and it should heat up easily. Once it gets some heat down there, it'll, it'll stay pretty warm. That insulation is actually drying out a lot down there now. So we're happy about that. Um, our big puddles are gone that were down there. So that tells us that, that we're in pretty good shape. We did have some rain and we haven't seen a drop of water uh, pool up on these stringers down here. And so you can see the staining where that was running down from above the deck. And so uh, we're good. It has rained since we since we got that uh, refilled and reglassed up there. We just put a layer of mat on it because that's all we had time to do. That'll hold it for now. We'll come back and we'll build it up before we start fishing. But that waterproofed it. And so we are good to go down here and start continuing to get this cleaned up now. Just want to make sure that this thing works so we can get, uh, get back to work. Ah, got flame. Check it out. Hell yeah. There she goes. A little dirty. How's it look? Dirty, dirty right now, but there might be fuel in there too, right? Probably needs adjusted to the air and everything. Uh -huh. Looks like it probably use some air right now. I'll just give it a minute and see if it clears up. Maybe it looks a little bit better. Oh yeah. Might have to go ahead and throw a elbow on that and get it up a bit higher. Yeah, so it doesn't come in through our door and stuff. And yeah, go looks like it might want to, huh? Yeah. Oh, I feel heat! Oh, it's nice! Alright, success! That's a game changer! Yeah. I'm already a lot happier. Oh, that's a lot warmer now. Yeah. Yeah, it's warmer. Oh yeah, it's nice and clean now. Ah, good. All right. Well, it shouldn't take long to warm things. It already feels like like warm in here. Yeah. Man, I, I feel spoiled. <laughs> this is like a. This is really nice. This is something that we don't get down here on the boats when we're working on them in the winter time. Yeah, it beats our other uh, heat options or uh, solutions in the past for sure. Yeah, they've been anything but acceptable. Yeah. Okay, well. Burn it away in there. All right, guys. Well, we just received a very expensive package from the shipping company. Yeah. Container ship came in the other day with our part, so to speak. So kind of an awkward load of sticking out the back of the truck about five feet, six feet, yeah. eight feet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, got our... Got our brand new shaft back there. See if it makes the ride home. Yeah, don't really want that one to be bouncing off the road. Yeah, so happy to get this in. Um, next step will be to get it on the boat somehow. Um, go next to the dock with the fishtail at high tide and just uh, drop it down with a single. It's about just shy of 400 pounds in the crate. So, And then at that point, We'll just be able to uh, wrestle wrestle it around, um, just get it on our bulwark on the fishtail and just slide it right through the, the door on the Emerald Isle. 
Yeah, we'll, we'll actually be able to use the pick hook, I think, most likely. Yeah, we'll we, just bring we can the pick up on one side. And line them up. Yeah. Well, I'm excited to see this, but we're just going to have to leave it in the paint for right now. Yeah, get it down to the boat. Yeah, no. Lower it onto the boat. Case. No reason to break it all open just to, uh, to close it back up, I guess. It's like they're a little bit rough with it in places. Yeah, a little bit of buckling over here. Yeah. Well, we'll see. <laughs> so this is a two and a half inch shaft. Um, yeah, just shy of just shy of 400 pounds with the with the crate, which I'm guessing is probably 50 or so pounds. I reckon. Uh. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, we're down in the harbor. As you can see, Dad's up there on the dock, and we've got our shaft. Getting ready to lift it down here under the boat. We're just gonna use our or a single here and uh, do a two point lift there and right there and a little peg line on the back and hopefully it'll uh, it not come end down up there a disaster. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sketch factor is moderate. A little fishtail for the assist here. Lift it down here, just set right there and should go pretty good. guys I'm sure there's a better way like hiring a boom truck but it's got money for that um, yeah. thumbs up yeah I'm excited to see what that looks like in there yeah we do so it should be pretty easy to get off the boat so thankfully we're just tied right next door and uh, we just pick it up and turn it and poke it right through the door and we can get on the other end of it with a hoist or something if need be and crank it in shimmy it in yeah it should just be able to set down between the rails actually yeah. about to swing the shaft over into the other boat here so pick it up and just bring it this way and uh, it in somehow yeah just kind of walk it in
Mission accomplished. Yeah. Is there a better, easier way to do it? Probably, but hey, no injuries, no uh, disasters. Yeah. Pop her open here in a minute. Got some hardware here. Mm -hmm. These are universal couplings. Closer examination. Matt said uh, it's got two size of holes here, so the larger ones is what we're using um, to mate up to our our other coupler on the engine. And uh, I haven't verified the inside, but I reckon that's the correct one. Oh, look at the keyway. There's a nub there for extra extra mass hmm. 